Christy wanted to be loved so bad. She wanted to love him so bad. She wanted to believe he loved her. And I think almost got to the point that she thought that's what love was. Right now at 11, part two of a CBS 4 investigation. We continue digging for answers after a woman is allegedly murdered by her boyfriend who was on GPS monitoring at a time for a different stabbing. Christy Holt's family says the suspect, Marcus Garvin, abused her for years. Tonight, we are discovering whether those making decisions about pretrial release see a person's criminal history. CBS 4's Courtney Crown continues our investigation into pretrial and post-conviction monitoring. She joins us now live in the newsroom. And Courtney, so far, what have you learned here? Well, Lindsay, a domestic violence advocate is assigned to cases after a person goes before a judge and bond is set. Then they reach out to the survivor. Christie's family hopes judges take into account a person's entire history before deciding on release. After years of domestic abuse, Christy Holt's family cannot come to terms with the way she died. Her longtime boyfriend, Marcus Garvin, is accused of brutally murdering her and dismembering her body. I would love for women who are out there who are in the same position that Christy's in to know that there is a way out. This doesn't have to happen to you, too. Court documents show Garvin was on pretrial release and GPS monitoring, charged with the stabbing of a gas station customer in December 2020. Despite objection from the state, a judge lowered his bond from $30,000 to $1,500 and put him on GPS monitoring. Seven months later, he is accused of killing Christy. So if somebody has stabbed somebody else, that is to an advocate attempted homicide. So that individual, in my personal opinion, should have had more repercussions than a GPS monitoring. We spoke with an advocate from the Marion County Prosecutor's Office who spoke in general terms. An advocate from the Prosecutor's Office is assigned to help survivors after charges are filed. We notify them of court hearings. We notify them of bail review hearings or court hearings. We attend meetings with them. Garvin was charged with battery in 2012 before the 2020 stabbing. Advocate Division Administrator Linda Kershaw says a judge sees a defendant's history before making bond decisions, specifically on cases involving domestic violence. It not only has convictions, but it also has arrest. So they would look at the entire packet. Christie's family doubts this system works and shares this message to. light at the end of the tunnel. Christy's best friend says she tried to help Christy leave multiple times, but domestic violence relationships are complex. Advocates plead with victims to leave. They also say loved ones should be an encouraging ear for people, and they should share resources with them as well. We have those posted on this story on our website. Reporting in the newsroom tonight, Courtney Crown, CBS 4 News.